Hi, welcome to this new video here at protopic.co.uk We're going to be covering motors in this video and I've got three of our motors that we carry in stock here so I'll run through the three different types we have a DC motor here we have a servo motor and a stepper motor now I'll run through the basics on these for you over this video so a DC motor generally has the two contacts on the top a plus and a minus and these are run by a pure application of power so if you apply more voltage they'll run quicker and give you more torque if you apply less voltage you get less torque and less speed on the output shaft as well now, unfortunately these are not really controllable as far as speed goes without the addition of an extra sensor next up we have this servo motor now servo motor is again run on voltage but has a separate control line and has a limitation of generally not being able to turn one full rotation on the motor though you do get variations that will enable you to have a continuous rotation and finally we have a stepper motor a stepper motor has four wires connected to two coils inside and what this means is the motor will not run if you put a voltage on it it actually requires a signal therefore these do require a, a driver circuit of some description and we do the like, easy driver board like this and also the big easy driver board like this now the main difference between the two driver boards is power handling which I'll cover in a moment so here we have the basic DC motor now as you can see on there there's two tabs one here and one here and you would apply ground to one side and your voltage to the other creating the circuit and when the electricity runs through the internal coil it will actually spin the shaft that runs through the body now this motor uses about 3 volts under operation if you supply slightly less voltage than that you'll get less torque on your spindle and the motor itself will turn that little bit slower now these are normally controlled speed wise by either using a variable resistor or more commonly using a PWM circuit to rapidly switch on and off the voltage so if you have the voltage on for half the time and off for half the time then you'll get about half the voltage running through the coils on the motor and therefore the motor will run that little bit slower as well now here we have a servo motor now the servo motor has a small board with a feedback circuit inside it so if you were to send the control signal which is a PWM signal uh, of a particular line to send it to a location we'll say 90 degrees it would turn to 90 degrees the internal sensor would then sense that it was at that position and it would switch the motor off now you'll also see I've got an example of one of the horns there now this is a straight through horn and there are small holes drilled into this for mounting your control rods or screwing on an arm or what have you to the servo and that will enable you to use it as an actuator for the outside world and moving on uh, here we have a couple of examples of stepper motors uh, we have this nice small one here from Palulu and we have this larger one here and they come in from spark one now these motors generally will come with four or six wires and these are connected to coils inside the motor now what this means is you will not be able to just hook up a voltage and it will work the coils need to be turned on and off uh, polarized in a, a certain manner and at a certain frequency for the motors to actually spin now to do this you would use a controller board now we do a couple of controller boards we sell the easy stepper driver board the small one and we also do a slightly larger unit as well the big easy driver board these easy stepper driver boards the main difference between the two is the power handling or capability of the board now your easy stepper driver board here will handle up to 750 milliamps per phase whereas the big easy will handle 2 amps per phase or 2000 milliamps per phase 
Now these would hook up to your project controller, whether that's a, a clock source or in most cases a microcontroller, whether it be an Arduino or a PIC based system. Now you'll be able to see on this close up of the board the connections that you actually need to hook up. So we'll start at the bottom, the other side is what you hook up to your microcontroller and the pins here are DIR for direction so if it's pulled higher it will go one way, if it's pulled low it will go the opposite way. Step, so get low to high transition will step the motor one step. Now the previous motors I showed you are 200 steps per revolution so that would be 1.8 degrees per step. You also have a ground connection on here. Now this is used as a reference for the other two pins going back to your microcontroller. You also have a sleep and MS1 on here. The MS is for micro stepping. If you look at the data sheet and follow the instructions, you can change what mode this unit operates in. You've also got a ground and a fire volt. Now these are an output as long as your microcontroller is using less than about 100 milliamps then you will be able to run it from these two pins. If it's using more then it's not worthwhile putting load onto this regulator. I would leave these disconnected and just run the project from a external power source. Now going along the top we have A and B for the motors. Now, a would be one coil, B would be another coil. And here you have PFD and reset. Now you, generally you'll leave these alone as they're pulled to the required levels by onboard resistors on the board. There's no real need to interfere with these at all. And you also have an enable line. Now as the board stands, the board is running enabled and if you need to disable it, for instance to switch the power off going out to your stepper motor, you would use the enable line. You also have MS2, which again is linked to MS1 uh, for setting your micro step. And then you have your motor input, you have your ground and your voltage on there. Now looking at the other board, the big easy driver, which I will pop up, is exactly the same on there other than the position of the pins have been moved. So you'll see you have enable micro stepping one, two, you've also got an extra micro stepping three. Uh, you have a reset, a sleep, voltage, ground, step and direction. Now you'll see these bottom pins are slightly differently spaced to your normal unit. This is designed for a uh, pin headers that get screwed in with a 2.5mm pitch on them. It's exactly the same pins that run in the row behind it and this will take a standard 0.1 inch header. And up the top again you have your motor A, B, ground and motor power. Steppers are very good at the job they do. One of the issues is they have no feedback so you don't know where they're going to be at any particular time. And this is very important, especially if you switch a unit on you don't know where the mechanism is going to be. So we'll base a, a small example of that on a printer. If you were printing something out and your power was cut, the carriage is maybe halfway through a line, the printer doesn't know where that is going to be when it's powered back up. So it goes through a, a small uh, self-test and reset routine where it spins the traction drive for the paper, make sure there's nothing jammed in, it drives it for about a page and a half's worth, so if there is a page stuck in there, it's going to spit it out. Uh, then also moves the carriage to the opposite side of where the carriage would be normally locked. And then at the end of there, there is a micro switch, similar to this, or in most modern printers, it is actually a transmitter and receiver pair based on an LED of some type with the detector and when that gap is broken it knows exactly where the head is it then runs it back to its home position and locks it down. Now I'm just showing you these three switches 
they have their own individual uses. Obviously, the smaller one is ideal for those smaller jobs. Larger ones with the normal sort of size that people generally put into the uh, projects, whether it be a, a CNC machine, a pick and place machine, laser printers, etc., can use this type of mechanism. And then you have a switch with the arm and a small roller on the end. And that is designed for, say, you have a circle with a cutout. So you could have the circle rolling against this, and then when it reaches the cutout, the spring would then release the switch, and you would know it's at its home position. So that's covering an introduction to motors and the controllers for stepper motors as well. Now, each of these have their own pluses and minuses. The standard DC motor like this is very easy to hook up. All you have to do is give it a relatively low voltage and it will run. And you can adjust the speed using the PWM output from your circuit through a transistor or a MOSFET. And then you have servo motors. Now these require a little bit more control with a supplied voltage, around about 6 volts in most cases, and a control line. Uh, the control line is a PWM signal, so generally you'll use a microcontroller or some other type of timer to put the frequency into the servo motor, and that will give you a location where you can set and that is a dead location, as in it is specific to that frequency. And finally, we covered stepper motors. Now, stepper motors have no feedback of their own, though that can be added with an encoder connected to the output shaft or to the other side of the mechanism that you're actually driving. But they have the benefit of high repeatability. You know, supply a pulse and they will give one step and you have the ability to use very high currents on some of these motors as well. As I said, we have a driver capable of supplying 2 amps if required on these, and that's more than enough to drive a, a small CNC machine, for instance. Well, I hope that's given you some insight into the different types of motors and their uses. Thanks for watching.